Welcome to the On3 Roundtable, where this college football season we'll preview and recap the top games and talk about the top storylines in the sport with On3's best and brightest when it comes to knowledge and insiders. Today we're talking to Sean Callahan from Husker Online to talk about Nebraska's upcoming marquee matchup with Colorado this weekend. Sean, you saw Dylan Riola in week one. He had an amazing performance. What do you expect to see from him in week two against his Colorado defense? Well, yeah, the stage is definitely bigger. He's going against a first-round draft pick in Shador Sanders, national TV on NBC. He was on national TV, though, for his debut on Fox, so a lot of people got to see Dylan Riola. But I think when you look at what he did, it was really, Kate, in only two and a half quarters of work. The starters came out of that game at the uh, with five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Um, so Dylan Riola could have easily have even had bigger numbers if he played a couple of more series in that game on Saturday. But just his poise, his ability to check, make calls of the line of scrimmage, little details. I mean, there was a second and 30 that he got Nebraska out of uh, with two completions on second and third down that led to a touchdown. He operated a two-minute drill right before halftime where he found Jamal Banks in the corner of the end zone for uh, kind of a, a touchdown that really sealed the game at that point. And, and, and just his management, you know, he checked into a run call on his own. The helmet communication was turned off, and the check call led to a 42-yard run, the longest run of the game. So there's, it's not just the arm. He's got a really, really good feel for the game of football, and that showed in this opening game against UTEP. Yeah, well, from what we saw in Colorado's defense in week one, there sounds like some areas that Dylan might be able to exploit there. But you mentioned Shador Sanders. This is an excellent quarterback matchup when it comes to intrigue and talent. How do you think Colorado's defense, or Nebraska's defense, rather, will be able to match up against Shador Sanders and his weapons that he has out wide like Travis Hunter and a Jimmy Horn? Well, they last year had a pretty good plan early, and then it just fell apart. I mean, the Huskers, for almost two quarters, had a very good feel uh, but they, as Matt Rule said, when you fumble the ball five times like Nebraska did and, and make mistakes like they did, that game got away from them before you could blink your eyes. I mean, Nebraska was going to kick a field goal to take the lead. They missed the field goal, and then it just all went downhill from that point, and Colorado went on a route in Nebraska. But this is a veteran defense. They got after Shador Sanders. I believe they sacked him eight times last year, seven or eight times. So um, they have all of those players back and some new additions. Um, the secondary is also very veteran. John Butler is their new secondary coach. He came from the Buffalo Bills, uh, where they had the top defense in the league. And you know, he, he knows how to stop some good fast receivers. I mean, he's put some pretty good game plans in place that help stop the Miami Dolphins and what they do, um, which would be a pretty good comparison to Colorado with the speed and the quarterback play. Um, so they have the, the minds on this coaching staff. And I do think they probably kept things pretty vanilla as far as what they showed last week against UTEP. You mentioned last year's game, Sean. It was one of the most hyped games coming into week two, like it's going to be this year. It was a bunch of turnovers. It ended up being a lopsided loss for Nebraska, whether it's inside of the program, maybe outside of the program. How much do you think last year's game is being talked about and discussed headed into this year's version of the matchup? Um, I don't know if the players that much, but I would say from the fans, it's been tough. I mean, Colorado... These two teams used to play every year in the Big 8 and the Big 12 on Black Friday for the last part of the series. And then in 2010, that stopped when Nebraska started in the Big 10 in 2011. Uh, they have played, though, three times since 2018. This will be the fourth time since 2018. Colorado has won all three of those previous games. So to see Colorado have the bragging rights, it's been hard for Nebraska fans because in all reality, Nebraska – should have won at least probably two of those games, if not all three, they could have won. And they lost all three. Um, you know, they blew a 17 nothing lead in Boulder in 2019. Uh, they had the game wrapped up. If they just convert one third down that was dropped, the game's over in 2018. And then obviously last year's game. Um, so for anything, I think Nebraska fans just want to get those bragging rights back because uh, the two bordering states, it's hard to go into Colorado. You hear so much about um, the way these games have gone, and I think Nebraska fans have a lot of pride and would like to see uh, them them take care of business, especially on this big stage with Deion Sanders and NBC. It is the 1994 30-year national championship reunion as well. Who did that 1994 team beat in a classic two-versus-three game? Colorado. Uh, so that, that will have a little juice to this rivalry. That Colorado team had Cordell Stewart and Michael Westbrook. That was probably Colorado's best team of all time, and Nebraska was able to beat them in a two-versus-three game, which was one of the first games that ESPN's College Game Day ever went to. 
uh, back in that day, 30 years ago. Warren Sapp also on this Colorado coaching staff, that 94 Nebraska team uh, beat Sapp's Hurricanes in Lincoln. So there's a little bit of other side angles on top of everything else that will be going on in this game here on Saturday. Definitely sounds like there's a ton of storylines. And last thing for you, Sean, I guess we can call this Callahan's keys. What do you think are going to be the keys to the game if Nebraska wants to flip the script and get the win in this one? I, I just think the plan with Shador Sanders, you know, are, are they going to drop seven? Can they blitz him? When do they blitz him? North Dakota State didn't really blitz him a lot. I, I do think Nebraska is going to come at him with more looks and defensive schemes that they haven't shown yet. And their front four uh, could, can get to him. North Dakota State, did a little bit, but th this will be a tougher matchup. Nebraska's got to take advantage of it. The crowd noise also needs to play a factor to disrupt Colorado's offensive line that doesn't have a lot of continuity in terms of playing together. And then on offense, can Dylan Riola just be the guy we saw last week? I think if he plays anywhere close to what we saw last week, Nebraska has a very, very good chance to win this game. They need to slow it down a little bit, though, force Colorado to p play more of a Big Ten game. This is not a track meet or seven on seven game. This this needs to be an eleven on eleven physical football game that you play in the Big Ten conference. Well, Sean, we'll definitely keep an eye on those keys. And for more keys and more insight and high level knowledge on Nebraska Corn Huskers, make sure you get yourself a membership to Husker Online. Sean and the team are crushing it as far as Nebraska coverage. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel on Three Roundtable. Comment, leave us a like. Let us know how you think the Corn Huskers are going to do against the Buffs this weekend. And Sean, thanks again for joining us. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it.